Mike Hornby joining me on the program today. Time is flying. This is a big day. Having, having fun. It's, uh, it moves fast. It does. And it's yeah. almost over. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, we're closing with a bang here on our uh, final segment. Three new businesses were announced moving into the state yesterday. One of those in Berkeley uh, County. Jennifer Smith has joined us in studio, head of economic development in Berkeley County. Jen, good to see you again. Good to see you as well. Mitch Carmichael via telephone. He is the economic development director in uh, West Virginia. Mitch, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. I understand you're on a tight yes. time budget. You may need to, uh, to move out quickly. That's okay. We understand yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, we've got Jen to cover the Berkeley County part of this uh, information, Mitch, but maybe you could uh, get into the Mason County and Buchanan uh, areas with the businesses that are headed there first. Oh, I'd love to, and thanks. It's another uh, you know stellar day for West Virginia in terms of economic development. Uh, yesterday, the, the governor made the announcement for... Um, a couple of innovate one of big big company Babcock and Wilcox that will uh, enter into the hydrogen space with some new technology uh, is situated primarily in Mason County. Uh, several, uh, I don't know, I think when we're probably around fifty, sixty jobs with that high end jobs uh, in uh, hydrogen conversion from uh, uh, various fossil fuels, whether it be uh, gas or uh, coal. Then uh, the other one that we're very excited about that will be located in Buchanan, West Virginia, is a, uh, many people will know, a shark tank company. Uh, Kevin O'Leary is an investor uh, with a company called Prime 6 that makes a biochar product that is used, uh, it's basically high-end charcoal, but it, then it's utilized for soil additives to make the soil more productive, uh, for uh, cooking uh, appliances and uh, those type uh, applications. And uh, we're talking uh, 75 jobs uh, with that announcement, uh, as well as all the cachet it brings to West Virginia in terms of our uh, the, the willingness for uh, big corporations to select West Virginia for all the great reasons that are uh, uh, being becoming known throughout uh, America and the world, really, people are coming to West Virginia. We are winning on a big, uh, big stage. Mitch, I'm always uh, shocked when you do a presentation down in, in in Charleston and you show us the economic impact that we uh, and successes that we've had over the last four years. Can you remind our audience what those numbers yeah. are? Yeah, it, uh, thank you for bringing that up because. Uh, in the four years prior to us taking uh, the reins of economic development, in that four-year period, uh, West Virginia attracted $6 billion in investment during that four-year period, and they were all uh, crowing about it. It was, this is great, we're doing fantastic, $6 billion, and it is a lot of money, it's a lot of investment. In two years, since we, uh, uh, you know, had an opportunity to guide that uh, process, We've done ten billion dollars, so and uh, about ten point five of private sector investment. And so when one thinks about, and the, we've had the fastest job creation in the history of West Virginia. We've expanded broadband to more people than uh, the in any time period in West Virginia, uh, and so our GDP has outpaced our. Uh, competing and uh, contiguous states. It is an incredible uh, time to be in West Virginia, and it just feels good because I've been in this process, many of us have, for a lot of years, and we knew, always knew that when we made some of these changes that needed to be made and we had the right leadership and the governor and other uh, involved, we could make West Virginia shine. We had every asset to do so, and look, look at the results outpacing our uh, contiguous states in terms of GDP growth, fastest job growth in West Virginia's history, incredible capital investment. In fact, new core uh, commercial metals up in Berkeley County, other Fortune 100 companies have selected West Virginia to make their largest corporate investments in the history of their corporations. Uh, and West Virginia has won those investments over incredible competition from uh you know, states throughout the nation. Prime Sixes, uh, Rick Franco, he crowed. Uh, yeah. He went Ricky on and on Franco about the lady. Uh, yeah, she is terrific. She, about, my apologies. Uh, so, yeah, yeah they, they really had uh, a lot to say about the business environment of West Virginia in regards to why they came here. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, and it's becoming known. I mean, we are very good, I think, at uh, touting the advantages of, of the people of West Virginia. We want to be the, you know, sort of the sales arm for our state. And when people come here and realize that it, many people don't know that West Virginia, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, tracks a metric that says how loyal is the workforce in your state. West Virginia has the most loyal workforce in America. And so when one thinks about that, if you're a manufacturing entity or you're a company locating in a state and you want to select some place where you can develop a, a, you know, a culture and people stick with it and the jobs are uh, you know, valued, this is the place to come. You hire people here, pay them a fair wage, and they will stay with you at a greater propensity than any other state in America. Mitch, were there any incentives uh, for these programs, uh, these three yes. companies? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the companies have, some of the companies have received, you know, it, the, the incentive package vary based on the needs of the company. But, for instance, a Prime 6, West Virginia, uh, the taxpayer of West Virginia invested, uh, let's say, I think it's like $12 million. Uh, but the company doesn't get the money until and unless they hit all the markers that are in place uh, for the performance metrics. And I'm very proud of the way we put these together. We take a security interest in the building and the equipment and all the components that are associated with, uh, uh, with the production of the uh, product. And so when, and we make the companies adhere to our performance standards and they're in our a memorandum of agreement that specifies exactly what has to happen, how many jobs have to be in place, the wage rates for the jobs, the uh, health care uh, benefits that go along with those jobs. Then after a five, six, seven-year period that we put in place, they can earn that asset. In other words, that asset is theirs after they hit the performance metrics. And it's much different than the way they used to do it before where they would just write the company a check and hope that they performed. And if they didn't, they were just, you know, the taxpayer of West Virginia was left holding the bag this case, we have a hard asset that we're secured just like a bank would be. Jennifer Smith, tell us about Handcraft Services and where in Berkeley County they will be located. Yes. Hey, before, uh, if you don't mind, good, uh, ladies, yeah, I have to run because of uh, uh, some other meetings I have, but uh, Jennifer will do a fantastic job of explaining the Berkeley County uh, component. Yeah, Mitch, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you all. Uh -huh. Thanks. Have a great day. Yes, so Handcraft Services, the, um, they are a family-owned business um, that started in 1970 um, by John Nichols, and um, they're still family-owned, um, and they're in their third generation. Um, so now... Um, where, were, where were they based out of originally? Richmond. Richmond, okay. Yes, so now, um, including Richmond, um, they are also in Delaware, Maryland, South Carolina, North Carolina, um, Tennessee, and now West Virginia. So I'm excited about that. Um, they will be located um, next to P&G, sort of, on Consumer Drive. Okay. Um, the Development Authority owned the Bender Fulton property, um, and they purchased about 17 acres there. So they're up and down the East Coast. What made them choose uh, the Eastern Panhandle and, and West Virginia and all? So they're currently, um, they specialize in um, linen, um, medical linen, um, and they already have some customers in our area. Obviously, with um, where we're located on I-81, um, it is um, a strategic location for them. So um, that was the whole purpose. Of the and did they, did they come to you uh, or the Economic Development Authority? You Yes, yeah, so I had been working with um, a real estate attorney for about a year and a half um, f for this project, um, trying to locate land, um, and they did find some land on our website and had been looking, like I said, for about a year and a half. So. Now, did you have to offer them any incentives to, to come to West Virginia? Um, no, they um, have not asked for any incentives. Um, That's and fantastic. Yes. Yeah, so um, we are, in fact, though, putting in a gas line um, for this project. Um, however, this gas line will not only help um, handcraft services, will, but will also help everyone in that surrounding area to experience. And all the other properties that you have Absolutely. become much more attractive correct? absolutely jennifer tell me about plant one and then plant two and if you could give us the physical 
uh, descriptions of these plants? Sure. Yeah, so plant one is supposed to be operational. They'd like to um, be operational in April of 2025. Um, both plants, um, they plan on being like 60,000 square feet, um, and um, they're purposely separate. One will be a medical facility, and one will be um, non-medical. Um, they have to separate for um, environmental reasons um, but they will like I said be located on consumer drive um, closer to route 11 um, there's about 17 acres that they purchase there have you visited one of their other plants um, so someone in my staff um, had visited as well as the state had visited um, their Richmond facility okay. you said a real estate attorney for the company had contacted you and this took about a year and a half Tell me some of the time markers along the way and the things that needed to be accomplished before the box was finally checked for the last time. I will say working with planning and engineering, I can't give enough um, gratitude to working with the county. They're amazing. Laura and Brian um, and their team um, work to get things done um, and help things along with the process. So a lot of it was, you know, planning and engineering and making sure they got all their permits. Um, I was also working with Arco Murray through the whole process. Um, and they're, they're the ones that were doing the due diligence and on, on site um, continuing with that as well. Um, so they, that planning and engineering happens before the close of the property? Or correct. The, the, so we so, have to do a little work before they'll sign the, the, the final deal, correct? Absolutely. So working with planning and engineering, you obviously, we don't want to sell a piece of land um, right. just to sell it. We want yeah. to make sure that your project will work. Um, so there is a process of due diligence that they go through. I want to say they had about 120 days to go through that process um, to make sure that everything um, would work and their plant would be able to be functionable. These are both 60,000 square feet? Foot plants? Correct. How does that compare to the physical footprint of, say, Procter & Gamble? So Procter & Gamble um, is about 2 million under under roof, um, and they have about f over 500 acres. So mm -hmm. this is a much smaller footprint. <laughs> much smaller footprint. I <laughs> got gotcha. you. So do we have enough water? In Berkeley County to be able to take care of another company this size? Absolutely. So I do want to touch on, you know, this um, particular project. They are very environmentally um, responsible. So they actually don't use as much water as you would think to wash the linen. So they actually use um, less than a half a gallon to wash um per pound of linen mm -hmm. um, so that's that's huge apparently that will save about 1 million gallons per year that they don't have to use um, as well as they reclaim their heat um, from their wastewater and their boiler and their boiler discharge for their incoming water um, process um, so um, they won't need as much water. They are um, a large gas user, mm -hmm. um, but like I said, we are putting in the gas line as well. And they will be hiring over 200 people? 220. And what are those uh, jobs specifically? Any idea? Um, so there will be some technicians um, to run the plant. Um, it is a, you know, a advanced technology that they use. Um, there's also obviously plant managers and things like that. And the construction, it's in and of itself, or is there anything that mandates that they use so many West Virginia workers for the construction of these plants? Um, no, there's not. Um, like I said, there aren't. They are not receiving any incentives, um, but they're welcome to use who they want. Mm -hmm. And how long does it take to build each of the plants? So, like I said, they want to be operational that, in 2025. That's incredibly fast. I mean, we're talking six months. So they um, obviously have to get all of their permits, right. which um, they have received um, most of their permits. They can start getting those in the planning um, and engineering phase um, before they actually get their site plan approval. Um, so they're now working on their grading permit, and mm -hmm. I believe they've received that. And once they receive that, they can start moving dirt. And are you continuing it to work with them through the whole process until Absolutely. they open or even beyond that? Uh, beyond that, because obviously the development authority, we work with a lot of workforce development programs and um, tax incentives. Um, we have the learn and earn. We work very closely with Blue Ridge. So making sure that they get the... So those 200 employees, obviously some of them are going to be very uh, high paying, but the you could do training at Blue Ridge. You work Absolutely. with Blue Ridge to 
now to to train them next year absolutely and blue ridge has been great about training um that you can develop your own program um with blue ridge and yeah it, they've worked with procter and gamble and clorox and many other companies so obviously in the north end and in the south end of berkeley we've got these incredibly large warehouses that a private or private pub, uh, private firms have were put in uh, i think one was a private equity firm that put one in 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 the north we haven't seen any of the, those get filled is that just they're just waiting to see eventually they'll, they'll they'll be filled or so they are still on the market and that is something we actively show and they are okay. on our website as well um the red rock facility that you're mentioning in yeah. the spring mills area so um you know that is about 800 it's over 800,000 square feet wow. you know it is something that we continue to show um for example this company um they they want about 60,000 square feet gotcha. so most of the larger warehouses don't um cut them down less than 100 right so well, and, and they don't they wouldn't split those into two three four different warehouses correct um they possibly they could, could okay if that would be something they're that they would be willing to do. I will say um, the Heinz buildings that are located off of exit eight, um, there is one that is fully taken by Treplar. Treplar was a company that we announced last, um, I guess last year. And um, Treplar, so they make the food packaging trays That's that right. your um, meat comes in. So um, styrofoam is being banned. So they make it out of a, um, eventually they want to be 100% biodegradable. Um, so they're making that right here in um, And how many employees do they have? Okay. So when it's all said and done, they're going to have about 600 employees. Do we have enough people here to take all these jobs? You know, we do. I will say that because of where we're located, you can, the population for employees is much greater. Um, so you can look at you know Winchester and um, Hagerstown area, um, and, and that's how we grow our tax base. We, we we bring these jobs will bring people closer and make them move in. That's where you see the growth in Berkeley and Jefferson. Um, what, so. What's the pay for these jobs? The range, Jennifer? Any idea? Uh, they're all above the median um, wage. Median, it, so that's fifty something thousand, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they'll all be above that. Yes. All right. So uh, will each plant. Uh, have 110 employees or does one plant going to be more employee heavy than the other oh so are you the handcraft services yes it will be 220 total so i would imagine they'd be split okay very good and and uh when do they turn the first shovel of dirt or have they done that already so it should be next week Next week, that soon. Yes. Yeah. Is there a big ceremony you're going to be out there with a golden so, shovel? They did actually announce um, during the Chamber of Commerce Business Summit um, mm -hmm. yesterday, the governor announced. So um, if they do host something here, I would gladly invite you guys. And uh, how much uh, involvement does the, the state have in this, the, the governor and Mitch Carmichael, as opposed to you? You know, the state um, has been actively involved in the conversation like i said there's many and like tax incentives and things like that that we discussed um but all of those are state mm -hmm. um, programs so they've been actively involved in the project as well and the berkeley county commission their involvement in this um the berkeley county commission i mentioned putting in the gas line um, the gas line was instrumental in getting this project um, here in berkeley county um, and this particular project is in the TIF. So the Berkeley County Commission did agree to pay, the development authority is paying for half, mm -hmm. and then the second half um, the county commission is paying for, so that was their involvement. How much more land does the development authority own that you are actively marketing? So we have properties all over um, Berkeley County. So just in this particular area, there's about 50, there's about 80 on one side in that just general area of um, 80 on one side of the rail. 80 acres. 80 acres on one side of the rail. And then we have about 80 on the other side of the rail. Um, and there's, um, Further back, I think our largest parcel is 256 acres. Um, so we have well in the hundreds of acres that we are actively trying to sell. And you know, the development authority isn't looking to make a profit 
on these um, properties. You know, we like to make it affordable for the businesses to locate here because I know I was listening earlier and they were talking about, you know, jobs and right. how important it is um, um, creating good jobs for, um, you know, everyone in recovery and things like that. So um, we want to make sure that it's a, as attractive as can be Absolutely. you mentioned the that the, the piece of property does have the rail going through it, it is does. there access to rail um from if a company needed rail is Absolutely. that is that an option for yes for? yes and we work very closely um that's winchester and western yeah. so we work very closely with omnitrax um that in that um particular area and we also work with csx um because i have another um, piece of property off of exit 16 that we work with CSX because the rail goes straight through that piece of property as well. And uh, about 30 seconds left, Jennifer, how much does I-81's presence play into these acquisitions? Everything. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say location, location, location. You can't stress that enough. Um, we have access to over 70% of the population in a day's drive. So that is number one. And so the land is cheaper than... Absolutely. Than Virginia. We curse that highway, but it is, it is uh, our lifeblood. It is the, yeah. the vein, is it not? Uh, Jen, hang out a second. We've got a final 50 seconds coming up with Jennifer Smith, Berkeley County Economic Development Director. Thanks to Jennifer Smith and her time this morning here. Any other announcements coming up in the near future that you anticipate? That you want to break on this radio station? I am working on several, actually. Um, I am under NDAs with two of them, so I can't announce them quite yet. Nobody's listening, John. It's fine. <laughs> just us. It's just us three. Just right? us three. But there yeah. could be more news coming in the next couple months? Absolutely. That's great Good news. stuff. Thank so you so much for your time news. today. Thank you. Michael, good to see you again. Time flies, man. As I said, it's, I can't believe two hours goes so fast. And our producer, Colin, the and it's a lot easier McLaughlin. with you on that side. Dave Bradley Show is next. This is Talk Radio. We're on Martinsburg and TV 10, and we'll talk again at 22. Short hour. <laughs>